I'm recording this on my computer. So now I'd like to welcome each and every panelist. I'll share a brief profile of them and I would request them to uh, just switch on their videos once their profile is being read and maybe say a hi or you can just unmute and say, you know, welcome everybody. That would be a pleasure to all of us. So I'll start with Mr. Gautam Mukherjee, Regional Director East Avishre, Managing Director Universal Group. Mr. Gautam Mukherjee is a seasoned entrepreneur and an HVAC industry veteran working for more than two decades, or rather I would say three decades, two would be two less. He is a stalwart in the industry. He had humble beginnings. Today, his organization, the Universal Group, is a prominent engineering solution providing company in, uh, in Eastern India, having expertise in the field of HVAC, power management, fire engineering services, and building management systems. Universal Group has offices at Kolkata, Guwahati, Patna, Bhuneshwar, and Rachi. Mr. Mukherjee leads a leader team of more than 200 young and dynamic professionals. Apart from business, his areas of interest are sports and music. And we have requested and had his wonderful voice rendered to a lot of Vishra events. He's a fantastic singer. I can guarantee you that. And a lot of people in this webinar would vouch for that too. Mr. Mukherjee is currently the regional director of Stavishwe and earlier has served as Vishwe in the capacity of Kolkata chapter president, convener of flagship event of East Rakon, and members of finance committee. So good evening and welcome, Mr. Gautam Mukherjee. It's a pleasure to welcome you at this program. OK. So he says hi to everybody. So now I get on to one more stalwart of the industry. We have a list of stalwarts today, Mr. Pratik Dr. Roy. Mr. Pratik Dr. Roy is a chief engineering manager of Larson and Tupro Limited based out of Bangalore or Bengaluru, I would say. Mr. Pratik Dr. Roy is a graduate in mechanical engineering from Jadapur University and has a postgraduate diploma in business management from Indian Institute of Management, Kolkata. He started his career with Steel Authority of India Limited as a Raul steel plant. He has worked with Blue Star Limited and is currently working as Chief Engineering Manager with Larson and Tupro Limited, heading the MEP design for Bengaluru International Airport. Mr. Pratik has over 25 years of rich experience in large HVAC system design across various application segments. He is a member of ASHRAE and ISHRAE and has been a past president and regional director of ISHRAE Kolkata chapter. He's a distinguished lecturer of ISHRAE and has been a speaker for various events and programs from Institute of Engineers, CII, ICC, Rotary Clubs, ISHRAE, and various engineering institutes. His areas of interest include HVAC system, design, energy efficiency, green building, and indoor air quality. So welcome to the panel, Mr. Pratik Dr. Rai. It's a pleasure to have you here. OK. So, uh, you want to speak something? You are muted, sir. Presently. No, no, I just wanted to say good evening and hi to everyone. Uh, thank you very much for making me a part of this. Uh, I, I really look forward to a good interaction with all the fellow panelists, uh, the great guys out there. So, let's look forward to, to an engrossment, engrossed, and an, you know, an interesting uh, interaction. Thank you, Shomojit, for the introduction. Thank you, Gatinda. So, moving ahead. When we are talking about Teachers Day, a program on Teachers Day, we have to have and we got to have our very esteemed teachers. We start with Mr. Professor Tapabrata Bhattacharya. He is the head of department mechanical engineering, Meghnath Sai Institute of Technology. Professor Tapabrata Bhattacharya has done his Bachelor of Mechanical Engineering from IIEST Shippur. He did his MS and PhD from University of North Carolina at Charlotte with specialization in geometric mechanics and controls. His professional career began with Hindustan Petroleum Corporation Limited. Then from the year 2000, he started his teaching career at Meghnath Science Institute of Technology. Then he joined in Institute of Engineering and Management, Kolkata. And presently, he is the head of department for mechanical engineering at Meghnath Science Institute of Technology, Kolkata. So with such an August presence, welcome to this webinar, Mr. Professor Tapabrato. It's a great to be having you here. 
Sir, the privilege is entirely mine. Thank you, Shomujit sir. You said a lot of nice words. I don't disagree. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> Pleasure. So going ahead, we have a very distinguished lady also in our as a panelist. We have Mrs. Shagarika Mukherjee, HR Learning and Development East Johnson Control Hitachi Air Conditioning India Limited. Mr. Shagarika worked as senior corporate sales trainer automobile for seven years, handling clients like Mahindra and Mahindra, Maruti Suzuki, Maruti Nexa, General Motors, Hero Motor Corp, Jaguar. So she has a lot of experience in automobiles. So guys, you know whom to talk to when you're going to talk about automobiles. She has she has received a lot of awards and accolades. Few of them I would like to mention here. This is three times zonal winner in Mahindra Idols in the training category, two times national winner in Mahindra Idols in the trainer category, one time in Johnson Control Hitachi India uh, Limited in Evolve Champion in individual category, and also in the team category. She was also awarded as a COVID warrior in Johnson Control Hitachi for training and development initiatives taken during lockdown. It's my pleasure privilege and a proud it's a pleasure to have you ma'am in this panel thank you for being here uh, so many uh, thank you so much for such a lovely uh, introduction in uh, this very uh, spacious occasion this 5th of september is very close to all of our heart and it takes us to back in school college days so thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to be part of uh, this panel and definitely it will be a very, very interactive, uh, you know, evening. That's what I am expecting. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sagarika san Okay, last but not the least, we have a fireball in with us as a panelist. I'm sure you have a lot of people have got a lot of knowledge and experiences from him and a lot of, you know, great things to talk about this very, very special person. He is Professor Gunjan Kumar, the Zonal Chair of East of Ishray Student Activity and the Professor of Institute of Engineering Management, Kolkata. And his profile is something to be really worried of. <laughs> Mr. Gunjan Kumar, the alumni of Hindu School of Mines, IIT Dhanbad, and, work, and working as Assistant Professor, Department of Mechanical Engineering, IEM Kolkata. He is holding position in Ishray, National Student Committee member with responsibility as Zonal Chair, Student Activities of Ishray of East Zone for the last two society years now. He, in the past, he was Ishray Kolkata Student Activity Chair and he had helped Ishray Kolkata to win the Student Performance Award nationally. He is also discharging his duties as faculty in charge of Ishray IEA Model School, Model Student Chapter, excuse me, Gunjan said has total 14 years of professional life experience, including eight years in industry. Mr. Kumar has worked as executive hot mill with Indian Seamless Metal Tubes Limited Pune, and has been Baramati to be exact, for first two years and further worked with McNally Bharat Engineering Company Limited Kolkata as assistant manager project for the for six years. With passion for teaching. He came back to academia and he started his teaching profession in 2014 with IEM Kolkata and with his great contribution in teaching learning processes, appreciated with all round teaching performance institutional award. As an active researcher, Gunjan sir, as we call him lovingly, has published number of technical papers in conferences and journals on various topics related to energy and sustainability and teaching pedagogy. Welcome Mr. Gunjan, Professor Gunjan to be, I'm sorry for that. Too. Professor Gunyan to this August panel and to be, it's a great feeling to have you here. Uh, thank you, sir, uh, Somajit, sir, uh, for your kind introduction. Just as a kidding note, when I was in ISM Dhanwad, my friend is kidding with me, uh, generally, that Professor Gunjan. In fact, that time I, I was coming from the industry and I have a plan in first semester itself, I got a sponsorship from McNally Bharat. And so I was supposed to go further industry, but still my friends say that uh, Professor, and now with this profession, I am in the teaching profession. So I'm sure that uh, let me take opportunity to welcome each and every one of you. And I'm sure this panel discussion, we will take something outcome where we are going to add value in the nation and each and every profile uh, for a coming future generation. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Professor Gunjan. And now we are going to start off the 
panel discussion. So when it's Teacher's Day, it's my duty to start with a teacher. So the, the panel discussion has been planned in such a way we are going to start our deliberations and we will listen to one of our esteemed teachers and we're going to end our program today also with one of our esteemed teachers who is also in the panel list. So I start with Professor Paprabhata Bhattacharya. Mr. Professor Bhattacharya, if you can just open, yeah, that's good. Let all people see you. So we can have all the panelists uh, opening up the videos. So now the question to you, sir. So do the students today idealize the teachers at, as it used to be during the Guru Shishya Parampara? Well, uh, it's, a, it's a very subjective question, but uh, I would tend to say that uh, it's the same as it used to be. And there are specific reasons for that. Today, earlier when we went to school, the teacher was the only source of in information or the source of knowledge, was the repository of knowledge that was available to us. And he was the window to the outside world. So he was revered like never before. But with nowadays, with the age of internet hitting on the younger generation, there are so many sources of knowledge. There are so many, uh, uh, what should I say, repositories to look upon. And sometimes they do a better job than a teacher does. That's firstly. There, there, I would say a distinct loss of lack of respect, I would say. I would categorize more as uh, teachers are being placed in the rightful uh, position. And second, we have to accept it. That's how the world runs. Uh, that's how it is. Uh, secondly, uh, the moral values are changing in society. We're living in a state of transition. Everything changes. Change is the only thing permanent. So everybody's role is being re-evaluated. It's not just teachers alone. Uh, every, every position. Likewise, uh, we are being evaluated for what it's worth. And students are more exposed to things around them. And they evaluate us for what we are. So I would tend to say, yes, there has been a change. We are not the guru we used to be. Uh, we are not the father. We are not the father equivalent which the Sanskrit slokas have uh, told us about. But we have to accept it. That's how it is. But you can earn respect, definitely, by your conduct and by your knowledge. And uh, I think the discussion will cover that aspect later on. Thank you, Professor Tapabhato. I'm really Thank feeling you. good Thank about you. what you just shared about. And definitely, we, it sets the ball rolling for our panel discussion. And it's a very important point which you have shared that times have changed. So now I'm going to request uh, Mr. Gautam Mukherjee with the second question which I have in my list. I'm sorry, Somajit, sir, to interrupt. Yes, yeah. that Bob Dylan song, which I just remember, times are changing. <laughs> I have heard that. Absolutely, absolutely. True, very true, Tapurvata, sir. Okay, so going ahead, I uh, now request Mr. Gautam Mukherjee. Uh, the question to you, sir, is what is actual education? Only textbook and scoring numbers? Or is beyond that involving overall development of a student to achieve his or her full potential? Thank you, Shomajit, for inviting me in the panel and putting me with such renowned people. Uh, Pratik is a very loving guy for me and we have a very wrong relationship with him. I still remember the first day I met him. It's a good question. Actually, my answer is education is to become a good human being. Actually, my answer is education to become is good human being. That is the answer for your first part of question. For the second part of question, what you are telling, according to me, reading, writing, arithmetic, these are important. These are required. But please understand, if these are used 
for making a student a good human being, then it is that only. And second, but third, maybe third part of your uh, question is, please understand we should all think that wisdom, respect, trust, love, hardworking, and inner power is very important and potential for take out your potentiality as in life to, be, to become a good potential value for a student. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So very, very, uh, I would say, words which are words of wisdom. And it really shows your 30, 35 years experience in the industry and the, the life of you know, the Brahmachari and the studies, what you have done. It really comes out in this two minutes of your wisdom. Thank you, uh, Mr. Gautam. Going ahead, now I'd like to have a question for Professor Gunjan. Sir, the role of modern day teachers, you have been in the teaching industry for more than six years now. So the role of modern day teachers, is it only limited to classroom teaching or teachers have a responsibility beyond classrooms? What are your views on this, Professor Gunjan? Yes, sir. So is my audio is clear, sir? Yes. Oh. Fine. Uh, if I got the question uh, that role of teacher uh, is, is up to limited to the classroom for all of classroom or it is beyond of that. Uh, is I'm correct, sir, Samjit, sir? Yes, you're right. Okay. So very first, as a teacher, as an educator, as a, I can say the facilitator or uh, educationist, let us know that what capacity we want to give to our coming generation that we are handling. You know, each and every one, the corona period has taught us that each and every one is a teacher. Even your, uh, of course, we know that first step is guided by our parents, your neighbors, your, your the, the milk vendor, your food processor, whoever is hand, all is directly, indirectly giving you the teaching. Now, having this, what capacity as when you are coming to the formal education, the primary education, then we have a professional education then we have a further structured way that, that our, uh, the country has. So what capacity we want to give? I, I just want to give a little bit trust here. The capacity very first that you want to give, I'm very much agree with Gautam sir and our TV sir that, uh, that the capacity that you want to give is handling the change, capacity to handle the change. That is very, very important. It's dynamic approach. The second capacity that you want to empower in your own on every student is that capacity to creativity and innovation. You know, if what work is today is not going to work tomorrow. So if you are not empowering that, I think that will not work. That will not work. So this capacity to handle the changes, capacity to handle uh, having a creativity, then capacity to research and question, you know, what is the learning? When I can say the teaching, teaching come through the learning. And what is the learning you're finding? Learning get evolved through the discussion, dialogue, deliberation. It's not a one-way communication, you know? When sometimes people get confused with the one way of communication, no. It is a discussion, dialogue and all. So capacity of research and, and, and the capacity of questioning. Then the fourth capacity that you want to give to every the upcoming generation is that capacity to handle new technology. And I think Corona period, we all have learned. Every generation is now handling the new technology. You know, sometimes we force, sometimes you put our own motivation, but so that means, but even I, I'm sure Gautam Shar in on edge, uh, uh, Pratik Shar in on edge have non, not gone through all such technology, but Sir is not today handling perfectly and, and able to handle. So every generation has to become today, what again, I'm saying you, what is work yesterday is not going to work tomorrow. So very ready for that. And then last I can say capacity of ethical mind. What individual you are looking for when you, are, you want to build a nation. Teacher role is very, very critical. You know, teacher is like a builder in Corona period. Our role is to you know, innovate. Teacher is constant innovator. We have to innovate rather than finding a problems. I can say 
find the solution with the complementing attitude and that is the nation can be built with this complementing attitude so that means creating a, a mind and with this three how you can do that i will give a solution for every uh, i have suggested what need to be done as a teacher now i will give you the solution too what i feel as a teacher is we have to develop a i can say very first that respectable respectable mind means we have to respect to each other start respecting to first yourself you are a unique creation of a god and you can do anything that start respecting start start respecting to your parents start respecting to your siblings start respecting to everyone that that is the first i can say then i can say the disciplined mind disciplined mind on this online world is very very important are you really committed to your business whatever you want to do honor the commitment honor the commitment honor the time that that i can say honor the family commitment honor the professional commitment with the honesty that this two tool i can say is going to be very very uh, critical when we are saying that how we can achieve all the this five capacity so sir what i have to say that as a teacher uh, we are like a role model road model cannot be created with the speech role model is demonstrated with the action so become a action oriented person and teacher has this responsibility on the shoulder to become a action oriented person and, and so that is what i have to say teacher is a facilitator teacher is a best friend sometimes a student cannot share the problem with the parents but they share the problem with the teacher this is the what teacher is you are the best best friend you are the best guide you are the best when a student in the needy you are the best helper so teacher role is everything that i can say but as always i can say teacher is also a human being teacher is also a human being they can also make mistake so teacher also need to be ready to accept the changes accept the uh, the challenges and and the, by that one has to go ahead so i think what i can say teacher i i want to summarize your answer sir teacher must have to be innovator teacher must to be facilitator teacher must be a good friend teacher must have a, a crossing beyond the boundary of a four wall and teacher must have a, a empowering every individual in their own way because teacher always handle heterogeneity so heterogeneity i can say the only teacher can handle what may be the platform is this is what i have to say sir thank you thank you professor gunjan wonderful words and i really like that sentence what you said what used to work yesterday would not work tomorrow and we all are experienced to that the platform which we are using for our panel discussion today was absolutely alien 5 months ago and not only this all the platforms which were there online was something which we never heard of and today we are we can say first or we can say we are motivated or we have to work on these type of platforms so definitely the change is the constant here okay so continuing with your question sir i would again go back to satapabrata bhattacharya professor tapabrata so how has teaching or other learning changed over the years when well, if i can continue with the question but do you feel that presently teachers have to research more than ever before more than ever before to be updated so i'm going to scratch your brains cells and talk about your you know past you know student life and so the time when you had come to, for teaching profession so how did you do it sir well uh, shomojit sir uh, regarding scratching my brains there aren't any you won't find <laughs> so no way no, when i went <laughs> no when i went to college dinosaurs would roam the planet most of the books that we had access to of mechanical engineering uh, i mean we could pick up a 1950s book from the library and that would have served the purpose the syllabus the curriculum uh, hadn't changed over the years much but what i noticed in my experience i mean i have put on a lot of gray cells in my i mean gray hairs in my uh, up the right up above and what i have noticed is uh, the change that would take 20 years these days that change happens in 5 years time or 2 years time or 3 years time everything is accelerated now when it comes to learning of course there has been radical change the curriculum changes i have never thought that we would be hit upon by internet of things artificial intelligence additive manufacturing all these things need to be incorporated in new sense of learning firstly and we have to be prepared for that 
the solution is to learn it to unlearn what you learned before and put a fresh coat of learning on yourself if you don't do it you are history and secondly uh, these the, these changes are very closely related to the things that are happening outside when we studied industry was far away place there used to be 2000 engineers manufactured in the various engineering qualified government engineering colleges in west bengal and everybody found a place now in the industry has come very closer it's right at your doorstep and you have to do projects you have to you, you, you not only do have to learn the thing stuff you need to apply it when i joined hindustan petroleum i was put on probation the training period went on for 6 months no company and and then they were we were put on a probation for one one year so one and a half years technically the company never expected any output of me we just moved around like freely floating bodies in and around the plant and nobody asked us what we are doing we never had to submit a report or learn something it was only after one and a half years that we were given a specific charge now industry can't afford to wait that long the term industry ready that you get to hear nowadays applies ever more so in today's situation so these are the two things where where you have to be really good at stuff not waste any time get your feet i mean hit the ground and run whenever you are recruited for a whenever a company recruits you that's what a company expects of you and for the teachers the mandate gets even bigger and that's where we are falling very very short we have to do like if you look at the fourth year project it's a i mean i would say barring a few most of the projects do not stand up to the test of a uh, i mean a, a vetting by an expert most of the projects are very rudimentary down the earth basic and they have been done before so things have changed you have to get closer to industry and i'm sure i mean that thing hasn't happened so the thing is new technologies we have to keep ourselves abreast of it and the only way that teacher learns is not by attending workshops not by sitting in classes i'm dead against the training programs for teachers it doesn't help that way they have to do research it's only when you do research when when you are doing frontier research path breaking research we are trying to figure out something new in a domain of uh, knowledge it's then when you learn otherwise you don't learn it's then when you scratch your brains then when you figure out something it's not by listening to others attending a workshop or a teachers training program that doesn't count for anything thank you thank you professor tawbat you have like yeah. that those are my two cents <laughs> <laughs> fantastically shared and explained to what all things are about so that brings to a very important uh, aspect of this panel discussion i am going to take uh, now some of our industry experts down the memory lane so i am going to take them to their student life starting with kotamda and then pratikda first i'll go with kotamda so seniority matters <laughs> so the question which i have for gotamda is you are an alumnus of renowned school ramkrishna mission rahora rahora and still date you maintain a very good personal relationship with your teachers why do you think this relationship is so profound and what difference did you notice when you recruit boys and girls today in your own organization vis a vis the experience which you have with your school life concert let's go back to our past you are muted sir you are muted you are muted thank you shobhanjit uh it's really a good question for me Yes, I studied in a very renowned school, Ramkrishna Mission. I am fortunate enough to study in this school. Till today, I believe whatever I am, I am earning my bread and butter because of that education from that school. And the best thing of the school days, I believe, the teachers and the environment, the excellent environment of Ramkrishna Mission as a teaching institution. not that this classes were air conditioned not that the uh, water filters were there for drinking water 
but the good classrooms were there good field was there swimming pool was there cricket pitch was there so we not only uh, studied we played in cricket and football and there was huge competition among the students that who can be the school player school team player so this is a great institution and it has taught us it has built us to build a team actually i believe the the teachers they had a real affection for us a real affection real love and till date i remember pythagoras theorem i still did i even a bernoulli's law still did i remember charles law boyle's law my teacher alok babu taught it i still remember mr shashank kujekar tiwari was a teacher bengali teacher who used to take even the handwriting also and today i feel that handwriting is my handwriting is because of him those days he used to take care they this handwriting should be like this that was the teacher and my experience also i missed a goal in a football match after two months one history teacher i was a science student one history teacher met me on the road he talked me from the bicycle he said gautam how can that you miss this goal i still remember i was sad levy ashin also missed the goal but how can i say i cannot miss the goal when we won the match for the school well no no gautam i cannot expect that you uh, you as a goalkeeper you miss this goal i appreciate sir i miss this goal i feel still in mind but please remember that even after 45 years i remember the incident the affection and he used to believe that gautam is my student he plays football so he still remembers me on road he tells me that how can you miss this and today also each and everything i remember of them because there was huge affection huge love and we have really good respect for them the basic feelings were very very clear and in ramkrishna mission they taught us to become a good human being and everything will come for you don't think they we were in don't know that those days then the package and everything was not considered neither the parents used to stay nor teacher used to stay teacher used to stay because, because become a good boy good human being good student everything will come out and actually that comes out i tell you in those days institutions recruited simple people as teachers in afterwards we understood that they were not genius they are not gone to engineering or medical or that they were mediocre and up students but they were very good teachers they wanted to teach life long they have to and they were not after money or they are not after very good marbled house they were not thinking cars for them they are only thinking for the students would uh, ride car student would go to america student will get scholarship this was their ambition and they used to feel the students are their children this i can surely tell you even today whenever i get any opportunity to meet them some of them are alive some of them has gone above but really they have their contribution i don't i don't feel that it is not there it's still there still in my memory and firing me when i remember them they what they have done in sports they were not sports people but they used to love sports they to see our matches and they tell us they guide us they tell our parents that please send him in the tuition for physics chemistry math my father used to pay 25 rupees three days coaching okay and one science teacher used to teach physics chemistry math three and we are clear about the subject till today i can tell you we are clear about the subject even my uh, daughters also we have taught them so that was their contribution they were they were inside of us they were they were inside of us that was the they had sacrifice they had love they have respect as, as parents and they were strict also it's not they are not strict they used to tell parents they used to beat us also and say whatever i am doing i am feeling that you will be a good human being in life good man in life and you will be proud for us and still today if i touch their feet on road or anywhere in a function in a school function if they call me i really hats up to them their affection
so that is the thing they have given and for that they are still still on my yes they are the real teachers they are the real gurus i tell you thank they you gautam da thank you it's really going with a lot of nostalgia which you have shared and i'm sure yes. a lot of people who are here in the panel were also nodding their heads <laughs> including me so we just got back to our school life thanks to your words so i am coming to pratikda for the first time in this discussion now sir sorry good evening this is nirmal sir you are from rohara mission yes sir rohara ramkrishna sir yeah okay okay i am also from rohara mission when you talk about oh good prashant they are there is sir just i would request the audience uh, to kindly hold yourself now we are in the middle of the panel we cannot take any audience questions now and at the end of everything you can speak to the panelists but in the interest of time we have lot of questions that have come up and we would like to tell them request everybody to please hold yourself i know many alumnus of uh, prestigious institutions are over here definitely you can speak to the panelists but this is not the correct time i would request you please hold your uh, questions okay. now thank you nanina and i'm sure now who i'm going to bring to the speakers front there are a lot of people who are going to have the same college with him who must have gone to the same college so pratikda now i have got a question for you you are the yes. alumnus of one of the best colleges in the industry, in the country in terms of technical education jadavpur university so what particular teaching techniques do you find teachers of your time employed or what how did they teach to make your core of technical education so profound and strong I and mean, what did they inject inside you that you could come out with such wonderful <laughs> knowledge uh, all through your life okay shomoji thank you uh, let me just uh, thank ishri youth because in the morning i received an email and then a whatsapp post uh, which had a poster where you have acknowledged you know that uh, whatever time we spend with the students of ishray it was really good to see early in the morning so thank you very much uh, please convey the same to all the youth members thank you now uh, i think your question is on uh, teaching technique uh, uh, of uh, jadavpur university my alumni uh, you see i feel that uh, the balance of textbook classroom labs assignments and the projects now this this balance was extremely good uh, when i studied at jadavpur university and i'm sure it continues to be like that even today also uh, which which uh, really uh, gi gives a uh, gives a great impetus to a budding engineer to really love the subject you know learning will happen automatically it's uh, i think the institution Uh, what it actually does is it creates that interest within you, and uh, which uh, Professor Gunjan was saying, and in fact, even Topolbrotto Da was also uh, uh, referring to the same thing. So, uh, only thing I wish uh, today uh, the the way Ishre is what it is, and it really works with the student chapters, including Jadavpur University. I really miss uh, if we had an Ishre uh, what it is today when we were student. You know the kind of. Uh, exposure information uh, through seminars technical talks uh, then site visits design competitions i think it's fabulous and i would really urge all the students here to really make use of this platform so uh, yes uh, i still feel that uh, uh, you know in ju it was uh, really you know a lot of experimentation we were allowed to do and last but not the least we have we had a fantastic relationship with our teachers we had a great uh, student teacher ratio at that point of time i think it was 5 or 5 points 5 something around 6 so you can imagine you know the number of teachers we had and uh, we were like friends and uh, when we used to do labs or projects uh, we used to actually meet our teachers in coffee house as well of course you would not uh, used to meet in within the college canteen so that was the kind of relationship i think which gotamda was also talking about so it was really wonderful i mean uh, and uh, i really feel that it it, it was that uh, you know mix of uh, this you know uh, curriculum plus extra curricular activity and uh, when i talk of uh, you know teaching techniques uh, i should not take away the paraphernalia of a university education which is beyond uh, classroom or labs it's you know the Uh, the societies we had uh, the debating society the mountaineering club
the photography club, the science club, the annual cultural festivals, you know, everything, the canteens, uh, the evening, uh, 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 the evening, uh, you know, parties we used to have. So everything together was Jadavpur University. And beyond that, we cannot discuss in a formal uh, forum like this. But I hope you understand. So uh, overall, the package was excellent. And, uh, and really, uh, it helped us to become a good citizen, I think, which is finally the end objective of any education system. It really helped us to become uh, good citizens for this world at large. Thank you, Pratik Dayat. You are, uh, was just coming on to the second question also for you. Since you hopped up on a very important subject and a lot of you talked about the environment of Jadapu University, if I put it in one yes. sentence. Yeah. So uh, in that regard, I would like to ask you, what learnings did you, uh, you know, take from your college education? Obviously, Jadapu University as a whole, uh, which you are continuing to use it even today in your professional life. You know? Other than the textbooks, what I'm talking about, things which... Difficult question. Uh, <laughs> one, one word will be everything. I'm carrying everything which I learned from Jalpur University. However, if you really ask from an engineering professional's perspective, because you, you ended your question by adding, I'm still using today. I think it's the importance of uh, power of observation and uh, asking the right questions. Now, uh, let me just try and explain to you why I said these two things and why is graduation courses important to a school because in a school you have a structured environment right you have a syllabus uh, and then you know your path is there you want to be a doctor or a lawyer or you want to be a researcher you want to be an engineer so you know there is a syllabus uh, you know what is to be done but the moment you come to a graduation level this structuredness starts coming down. So college also has a syllabus. However, there are also many other things, including co-curricular activities. Just to give an example, you know, why I said asking right questions is so important even today and power of observation. You see, I was the convener of the cultural festival in a Shanskriti in Jadavpur University in 1993 in our final year. And please understand, everybody is equal in in a corporate uh, setup, you still have a hierarchy, which is, of course, is fizzling out and it's good. Uh, but in a college, you are all having the same stake. But to work as a team and to deliver a project gives you a first hand experience of what is teamwork, right? And, uh, you know, uh, in our professional life, we, we see a lot of conflict. Uh, whether you're in an academic institution or in an NGO or in politics, there are a lot of conflicts. And it is not that I am right and the other person is wrong. It's only our perspectives differ. And to understand why these perspectives differ, and he's not a crook. He is not a dishonest person. It's only the background from which he comes, the department he is representing, the company he is representing, Maybe his stakes are not exactly much matching with your stakes. So it's by asking the ability to ask the right questions, you understand the other person better, and you are able to resolve conflict better. So I think these things happened from uh, our JU days. I just remember when Tapabrotoda was talking of labs and project works, I remember there used to be a situation, we used to have you know three hours lab uh, and uh, you are conducting an experiment, but while for Mr. Tapabrato Bhattacharya, uh, I think uh, he has done that experience hundred of times, but for us, it was new. And so four or five of us are working on an experiment and with say half an hour time still to go, you suddenly realize that your experiment has got completely haywire. All the results are coming completely out of uh, what is supposed to be. So, it depends your managerial ability. It depends upon your observation power, asking the right question, getting the lab assistant to help you out and see how he rectifies. And I tell you, whatever you bugger that experiment, the, the lab assistant is there to bring it back on path. How does he do it? That gives you the learning, right? So I think these things I still try to carry over with me and it helps me. So conflict resolution through asking the right questions in an unstructured situation, 
which comes out from your power of observation. I think that's a learning which uh, I, I still cherish that, uh, you know, has been uh, developed through my JU days. Very well said, Pratikta. How to organize yourself in a chaos. <laughs> yes. <laughs> With everybody's a boss. <laughs> exactly. That's wonderfully shared. I'm sure a lot of nostalgia now flowing around the field yeah. now. <laughs> so now I'll come to Sagarika, ma'am, now. So I have a, if you can just unmute yourself. So yeah. Sagarika, ma'am, I am going to ask you a question on your HR, as a HR professional. So we uh, learned about uh, different aspects of school life, college life. Things may have changed, but it does not change drastically. You know, it's not that you were suddenly gone. Obviously, before April 2020, I would say, <laughs> before the Corona time, we, we are still uh, students. Which is uh, so in those in times like this, if I talk about as an HR professional, what prompts you to recruit a candidate? It's a better academic or extracurricular. Uh, no extracurricular activities, but is a very brilliant student, or rather average in academics. You know, not a first guy of the class, middle way, doesn't fail also, gets away for sixties, for fifties and sixties, but very good in extracurricular activities. Uh, you know, a star in the making in as far as sports and cultural activities are concerned. So, how do you get that real mix, and how do you, you know, what makes you uh, come out with those recruitment ideas? In this scenario, uh, see uh, this this uh, particular point, uh, Samajan uh, matters always. Not uh, like because of this crisis of Corona, it will matter. But uh, I feel as an HR, this points always do matter. If I talk about scores and you know rank holders, yeah, they have their own benefits. They have their own advantages. I will say rather. Uh, yes, some in certain, uh, you know, position, uh, rank and counts, uh, numbers do counts. But uh, if you talk, if you ask me as an HR, if I am recruiting and I am going through the resume, definitely I will not concentrate only on scores and mark sheets and the ranks. And I think all my fellow HRs, at least I, the people whom I know, who are into recruitment, core recruitment, uh, always does not focus on the ranks. I mean, uh, you know why uh, I'm taking this opportunity and this is a wonderful question you have asked uh, because I know many of students are over here and uh, listening to us. So, you know, we always keep on running behind scores and we always keep on running. Even if I talk about myself and I was a student, definitely yes. Uh, that was one point always in back of the mind that if I can stand in top of three among my classmates, among my, you know, institution, but gradually, uh, you know, when I uh, started my profession and then into HR specifically, uh, I want to uh, tell all the students who are listening today that rank and scores are something which are your part of achievement. If you achieve that, it's your credibility that you did it, you topped it somewhere, you topped the exam, you topped the competition, it's good, it's, it's really good. But when it comes to recruitment, I don't think any HR will just look into your uh, ranks. They will try to find out certain more things also. Why I'm saying this, because if you are a topper, that does not mean that you will be a very good, you know, employ for an organization too because i'm just giving one example if i'm recruiting into sales for example definitely i will prefer someone who is very vocal right if i am recruiting someone who is uh, for a post i'm uh, selecting where one has to interact too much with many people definitely i'll try to find out along with qualificational uh, uh, certificates and other parts, whether that guy is vocal or not, whether he has art of, you know, interaction or not. I, uh, we do come across many candidates who are very good, who gives her very good score sheets, work sheets are with us in uh, resume. But when we try to talk with them, we interact with them, we find they are very much introvert. 
they are not that much free in uh, talking to others they are not that much free where they you know uh, are able to express their views and there are many students who are you know who only concentrate on books academic books specific specifically just because back of the mind it is running that i have to top in something and entire one very very important part of life they ignore it that is the extra curriculum sports is a part of the life it's very important because sports bring discipline in us uh, music sports you know taking part in debates in seminars in quiz programs these all do counts when we recruit especially when we recruit freshers very when well we recruit sir. freshers right so yes if you talk about me i'll definitely go with the candidate who has average score but is good in extra curriculum also definitely Th thank you for your inputs ma'am uh, sagar kishan you pointed out a very important fact of life also the toppers generally don't face failures and when they face failures in life that's when they don't know what to do true True. So that's where the sports and extracurricular activities come across because there you are subject to a lot of failures also in life. You know, you, you are not going to win the gold medal every time in the hundred meter race. I just want to add one little point. Like you know, uh, educational qualifications ranks do give us a base, a very good base, but those are theoretical knowledge. Right. when you enter into some extra curriculum activities definitely you are going to learn many more practical learnings from life right. which will definitely help you in uh, coming days of your professional life so thank that you, is what all hr looks for thank you sagarika san thank you for inputs now i'll the you have touched upon a very important point with your the last point which you added so now i'm going to go back to gautam da uh so gautam mukherjee i would like to ask you how much is the prevalent perception now this is specifically i'm talking about isha times and you know the colleges and the student chapters which we have how much is the prevalent perception that a student in mechanical or electrical engineering should only look to make his or her career in this in these fields only and we have some great examples like sundar pichai was metallurgical engineering and who challenged this perception so What is your take on this? That mechanical का बंदा है तो mechanical में ही जाना है ना? That अगर हिंदी सो electrical में electrical has to go. That what is your thought on this, sir? Thank you once again, Shri Omanjit, for uh, this question. I will just like to add last uh, in the last question you have asked me one thing that whenever I recruit uh, boys and girls in my organization, what I find them nowadays. right when from the students when they come so that i missed out i remember afterwards because i became little nostalgic so uh, sorry uh, my answer will be for that question a uh, little see nowadays what are the boys and girls coming in our organization for working they are not very higher or genius they come to us so they are mediocre mostly mediocre boys and girls they are coming to us what are find they are they are good they need a job they always express their requirement they need they, 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 please uh, give me an appointment like this but they cannot express what they have already they don't share sir i can do this thing i will be able to do this thing i find this is little gap in that secondly what when, when i tell them they, why you are looking for job you look for work think of work not a job specifically if i supposing i give some note that yes we are going to recruit you because my other officers have selected you and send it to me so 90% you are clear even then if i ask him he is always in a focus what you are giving me what you are asking to me i don't know they were from in the school or college he has just passed out he is not looking for the work he is looking for the job there is a difference between the job and the work if he says that i am an engineer i am a diploma engineer sir i have i need some work give me any job i'll be able to do this give me a little training and hold my hand i'll do it but you know his confidence is not there 
the do you have pasta and even if you ask him some general questions i have seen not from very good colleges like iim or jadavpur i am talking i am talking there are so many colleges other than these good colleges and all those who are coming to us mediocre colleges see their general knowledge has become very weak i feel in the in earlier days and today general knowledge do have too many informations but general knowledge if you show him what will be this measurement he will confuse if you confuse him in meter and feet he will confuse and this i am telling you in 50% boys and girls secondly mental arithmetic if you ask him can you divide 105 uh, 58 divided by 4 uh, sir well he will look calculator he cannot mental arithmetic is become very weak but you know when we go to customer customer first of mr this is design is okay this is that but what is the per square feet cost what <laughs> that is the question so mental arithmetic is weak nowadays the boys i find because they are more dependent on instruments computer or this thing calculators on that a little bit mental arithmetic is important i believe and they are i find they are weak uh, otherwise they are good they are simple they are trying for the job they are feeling that uh, if they get a job and after getting job they do well also that also i have seen they do well if you give them our opportunity to them you will do good so that is my difference i find in my uh, earlier days and now and again your your question is can you repeat me your question please one second the last question you met somebody just you repeat your question please yeah de- definitely definitely i just repeat uh, the question was in the prevalent uh, perception you know the perception that a student in mechanical engineering or electrical engineering should only look at look to make his or her career in that field itself So, not at all i don't believe in it if he has basic education of engineering he can go to any discipline and he can succeed there are enough example in the world and in our country even a b pharma graduate is topping in the it company b pharma graduate from jadavpur engineering college he has got to uh, got to it company and is doing well even uh, people uh, from the architecture they have gone to it and they are doing well so it is not that to me my belief is if you have basic education if you have basic intelligence and if you want to apply it the education you can catch up anything i just like to share one small example with you please in 12 years back i had an opportunity to interview kothari associates architect Mr. Uh, Maheshwari, so in Taj Bengal, Mr. Bimal Mistri, Mr. Bimal Mistri, Mr. Mistri. sorry, yes. Mr. Bimal Mistri, I had an opportunity to interview him. Uh, the uh, the interview was that the most of the boys and girls are going from the core branch to the IT. So what will happen? He said, "Believe me, Gautam, I have gone. To, why? Uh, whom you will ask this question after five years?" I mean, why, sir? Because I had gone to Jadavpur Engineering College from Kothari Associates. We are a good architect for builders. Lot many architecture we have done school, college, temple, stadium, everything. None of the boys and girls from the architecture stream came to our table for an interview. All of them have been recruited earlier by the IT companies. so architects they are studying in jadavpur engineering college they have got admission in jadavpur but they are going to it and they are successful they have not come back to it architecture i have not heard anyone that they have come back so i don't believe in that basic education basic intelligence and applying to your job is important yes if you stick to your own branch definitely you can also catch up the ladder and go but yes i don't think that if you change it and that world has already proved and i am agreeable to that thank you gotamda thank you that opens up another question to sagari kasan so the uh, question to you ma'am uh, ma'am you can just uh, sagari kasan if you just hello 
सागर का सन डिस्कशन Pratikda, if you can just unmute yourself. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Uh, the question I would like to ask you is like big companies like Google and Microsoft have stopped emphasizing on the academic performance, and now more focusing more on what their potential employee has to offer to their company. So it's more of a cost benefit analysis which has come across. <clears throat> so in a way, focus has been more on the online learning. the students were referring to online courses like una academy udemy and this online learning has increased with this pandemic times to learn and you know students are keeping abreast of the developments and they're getting skilled you know further so keeping that factor in mind is this a good change for the academic institutions at large the so called academic institutions which we have been uh, you know subjected to in our lives uh, thank you shomuji So I think you have asked me two. Uh, you you said it in one breath, but uh, if when I was processing it in my mind, I think there are two distinct different questions. Yeah, I can. First question is Google, Microsoft. They are not giving any importance to academic performance. Uh, so that's part A. And second part is uh, this online platforms which are going on. So how are these online teaching for, uh, platforms? How they are having an impact on the education institution, right? Am, am I right? Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Uh, I slightly disagree with uh, uh, Gautam Da. Sorry, Gautam Da. Gautam Da is our is my very dear Dada, <laughs> uh, friend, philosopher, guide, everything. Uh, because I have a slightly different take on this. Because uh, from an individual perspective, what Gautam Da said is absolutely right. Uh, I am in a democracy. I am in a free will. Uh, I may study whatever I want to study, and uh, I will go wherever opportunity exists. And more importantly, I will do uh, that uh, for which society rewards me. Correct. So, if society rewards me money and power, irrespective of what I am studying, I will do that. Absolutely fine. but where are the point i disagree with gautam da is uh, you know uh, in any government institute we spend a lot of money which comes from the tax payers fund to make you a mechanical or electrical engineer now i am only restricted to two because it's a niche program so i think most of us are related to these two things only so while a sundar pichai can become a sundar pichai uh, but uh, please understand that has happened at the cost and opportunity of a metallurgical of a metallurgist seat right so possibly sundar pichai would have become a sundar pichai even without going into iit now the point which i want to stress here now coming back to your question of google and microsoft i think it will be a great disservice to our uh, panel discussion i'm taking it that much strongly uh, and to our engineering industry and the educational institute to try to tune ourselves to what google and microsoft does because you know in our country we have a very peculiar uh, education system uh, we conduct uh, je uh, we conduct the, uh, the the state joint entrance examinations uh, we conduct cat uh, we grade profile the students across the country and we actually from a huge basket of talent we actually sieve them out and make a talent pool for multinationals to come and pick them up now there is nothing wrong in it actually if you see what google and microsoft or, or, or many such tech companies taking up a mechanical engineering or an electrical engineer or a civil engineer or a mining engineer or an architect or a pharmacist so which means they just don't care about the education in this four years training so they can as well and i certain and sometimes i think you know why waste four years the moment the gradation is done from an iit je Uh, exam they can pick them up directly and put them into some ground level work before you know putting them into the executive positions which they otherwise attain after pass graduating 
I think they will be much more mutually more productive. So uh, I just want to cut out, you know, what Microsoft and Google does. And I should, uh, and I, I genuinely feel that our educational institutes and the policymakers in that just doesn't bring this into their frame of decision making. This, this uh, development that Google is not giving importance to academic performance. They don't need it. Now, coming back to, say, other engineering organizations, as Shagorika Ma'am said, and I also said, when you ask me what are my best uh, uh, you know, carry forwards from JU, I never said anything technical. I said my ability to uh, you know, face unstructured situations, correct? But it doesn't mean that, uh, that the, the things what we learn is not important. It is our and society's uh, vision and mission and planning should be to use that. Otherwise, we are wasting taxpayers' money, period. It's as, it's as clear as that, right? So I think uh, we should not worry about the recruitment strategy of Google and Microsoft to plan our academic system. It just doesn't work. It doesn't Definitely. help us. Now, the second question, uh, if you can repeat, boss, I forgot. Yeah, you asked sure. something which I, uh, you know, I, I, I am very much against it. So that's why, you know, if you can ask me, just ask, ask me the... Uh, the no, no, part. absolutely. This is a panel discussion and we are open to uh, the thought process of the panelists. And you asked me a second question also. Yeah, I asked you the question. I'm going to repeat that question. That the, the focus has been on online learning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, right, right. Online, not now. Mm -hmm. Let us all appreciate Online platforms can be used for sharing information or exposure. It by, by its own self, it is not learning. I think professors here will agree to what I'm saying. You can share a lot of information, but that's not learning. Holistic learning means development of your own self. Human beings are social animals, right? So in a college, it's not only academics, it's not only classroom, there are practicals, there are labs, there are assignments, there are projects where you need to get an opportunity to, 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 to do something in groups. Your behavioral aspects, your, you know, your, your realistic expectations from relationships, all these things happen through a college campus and uh, uh, your library, uh, the fields, the canteens, Everything is very integral to a learning process. So let's hope what we are seeing now in Corona period, uh, it's a stopgap arrangement. Yes, the things has to move more, move on and technology is helping us. You see, one great thing has happened, you know, all these, you know, Zoom or Teams, they were there, but we were not using it. Now, I think that's one positive impact of COVID that we, we are seeing, you know, exchanging information, exchanging ideas, exchanging uh, you know, exposures, they are so easy to happen. You need not travel, I don't know, 50, 100, 500 people can get connected. But definitely, it's not uh, an alternative to face-to-face -face interaction, college, campus, learning. And many of my teacher friends uh, used to say this, you know, it's very difficult to teach without seeing, without getting a feedback and eye contact. It just doesn't happen. So I just sincerely feel that it's a it's a passing phase, and we get back to our original ways. Yes, you uh, so there are some learning platforms which at a very nominal fee, uh, it gives you a very condensed course. It's good. It it's it adds to your learning experience, but it it cannot uh, uh, you know substitute the basic principles of learning, which can only happen through interactions, physical interactions, and teamwork, right? So uh, uh, that's what I feel. So I really uh, waiting when uh, the normal things happen and we uh, get back to the uh, normal and things. So thank you. Thank you, Pratikda. You just opened one more topic for panel discussion sometime later. <laughs> Online versus face to face. That's a really good thing which you shared. Hey, Shomujit, I just thought of adding something when you were saying this. <laughs> Plus, college days are one of the best days yes. uh, of, uh, of a person. Absolutely. So I think, you know, let's be, uh, let's be honest with our next generation. We, we, we cannot divide them of, uh, of this uh, thrill and experiences of life through, you know, laptops and tabs and all. It's, it's, it's uh, at the end of the day, it's beyond certain point, it's rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> no, 
<laughs> perfectly put across, Pratikda. Definitely, perfect. we still reminisce in those college and the school days. So, uh, thank you, Pratikda. Now, come to Shagorika again, uh, ma'am. I since you missed out on that connection, we'll come to the online questions. We got some questions on online. Uh, before that, we'll come to Shagorika. We got two questions for you. I'll go one by one. So, uh, now as you no know, HR managers and you know involved in the industry. And how much open are HR managers to not focus on the background field of study, which was touched upon by Gautam Da also, uh, Mr. Gautam, as a past work experience of a candidate, you know, and focus whether he or she could prosper in their line of business and help their company grow. When a, a gelling of the individual with the company's ideals and the growth path. So I would like to have your views on this. Yeah, again, a uh, very interesting question. Uh, see, actually, I feel that nowadays, as everything is, uh, you know, changing. So, uh, if I ask you, uh, if you ask me, HRs are nowadays very open with the thought that uh, whether a candidate is, you know, how much a candidate can, uh, you know, uh, fit in the company or fit to the profile, rather than. Uh, judging a candidate from the background or the past experience. Uh, I will not deny that past experience does not matter or does not count. It does. Definitely it does. But present in present scenario, all I think all the HRs are very much open. That's why as Gautam San, you know, uh, I'm taking words from uh, his uh, views, what he has discussed that uh, a mechanical engineering guy passing out from an engineering college is working for IT and doing well. So this one example itself shows how much openness prevails in HR teams nowadays, you know. Even uh, if I share my own experience, uh, as you said in the very beginning in my introduction, uh, I have a, you know, entire experience in automobile. So if HR team of JCHN was not that much open, I could have been never been part of JCH and you could have never been called me for this panel discussion. So it shows that present scenario in present scenario, all HRs are looking forward to select those candidates who can, you know, optimize uh, the uh, optimize, uh, you know, productivity of their company rather than focusing on from which stream they are coming, what is their qualificational background, which subject they have studied, or in which industry they have worked. I feel all HRs looks for passion. So important thing is whether that guy is passionate about his work, his choice of work or not. Definitely. That is what matters, you know, passion matters. Definitely. And while we take interview, it definitely that one thing carries the HRs also and connects the HR with the candidate and gives this confidence that though the candidate is not from our own industry, but if we take that particular candidate, definitely that particular candidate will work very nice in our, uh, you know, uh, work frame, company's work frame and will do very good for himself, for the company also. So they are very, very, very open. Thank I, you, I can that. So I can understand what the point, because since you are also in the training the, you know, domain, so subsequent to the recruitment, the training and the capability of the candidate to grasp the, the things about the organization, it's very important in this regard. Right. So, coming to a second question for you, ma'am. Uh, how now coming to the present times, the COVID times, mm -hmm. since uh, the financial year we started with COVID. So, uh, how difficult it has been for the industry to recruit the batch of 2020, because the colleges pass out or the call from the colleges all, all during the months of March, April, May, June, that time when we had our pandemic on the peak. So, how difficult was it for no, for people to recruit and train and you know, take it forward. Uh, see, uh, Samajit San, I feel that every crisis comes with opportunity also. 
so uh, definitely all hr team has learned many new things we have learned many new things and we have taken this crisis as an opportunity to learn for ourselves also that how to come up with trainings for the employees how to look forward for new you know techniques of training and development for employees and definitely how what will be the new techniques for recruitment so recruitment has not stopped you know if i talk about uh, recruitment all recruitments are going through in various companies through online tools and mediums inductions are going through the online mediums like zoom microsoft team and many more and if i talk about the students the fresh students who were looking forward for their results and for campusing and all so i think yes there are challenges but i think all the teams are focusing on uh, now is the main time the good part is that hr will definitely focus on their past uh, curriculum and past scores i think that uh, is one very crucial point to be considered if i if i talk about the score sheet right and next is definitely uh, as i said you know that uh, while a student gives an interview the passion counts so hrs do uh, feel while taking the interview that what kind of part uh, you know uh, the candidate is and some kind of confidence do grow in the selector uh, select uh, selection uh, hr team also so uh, this entire crisis has given us opportunity to look forward in more in a practical way to the recruitment rather than focusing on the score sheet as i said score sheet do matter but they are not the last word Thank so you. Thank you. That is what I want to share. Out. Thank you, Sagari Kumar. So all those who are in the uh, group discussion today were listening to ma'am. So there are a lot of opportunities you can understand why because a lot of things are being worked upon and recruitment is on. So yes, that's it. It's on. Okay. So now I would like to have a question for Professor Tapa Brato. So Teachers Day, we need to go to our esteemed beloved teachers. so coming on to the online aspect we have had a small share of thoughts from pratikda as well as sagarika ma'am so now coming to you professor tapoto is online education making students industry ready or more importantly if i ask you is it equipping equip the other students getting equipped to face the work life thank you shamojit sir so yes i would say uh, your the answer would be yes but partly not entirely right that when people started uh, when the covid period came and we have been asked to switch entirely to online to develop online content and develop and give out our lectures over the internet i thought how am i going to compete with an mit professor because people can listen to mit and princeton professors of engineering and mechanics the same subject that i teach how am i going to compete with these people because they are legends in their own right now the thing is it's absolutely partially true if you look at the attendance of students before the covid 19 covid 2019 hit us uh the attendance was nothing to be proud of most students preferred to stay out of the class and they prepared themselves through youtube lectures and that's a reality i checked with people the students my students of mine and they said oh we are doing it at home i'm i'm getting ready the thing is we are looking at a future where classes or the technique of pedagogy is going to be a mix of online and offline online definitely has benefits you can listen you can tune in tune in to a particular lecture that suits your frequency you understand that lecture very well nothing wrong with that because when i take a class i can't uh read my lectures differently for different students it's it's a, it's a general lecture which i hope goes down well with all the students but definitely there will be some students who feel left out now they make it up by listening to online lectures at their own free will and there are so many variations available over the internet i can't touch upon every aspect of that particular uh, topic uh, in the class because of paucity of time lack of time so that's one thing and uh, but the thing is as uh, pratik the rightly pointed out there are some instances where you really need to work as a team if you are doing a lab 
a classic example. But think said, if you get stuck in the lab, uh, you take the help of the lab instructor. But what he didn't mention was there was another solution to, uh, to go around the problem. If you can consult last year's readings as well. <laughs> and see that you get close to that. <laughs> so he didn't say that. <laughs> that, that was uh, one of the solutions. But yes, like there'll be, uh, uh, there'll be, there are some cases, instances where you really need to work as a team, own your leadership skills, collaborate with others to achieve a particular objective. And doing a lab gives you that training, that it, it, it's, a, it's part of that exercise. So in the foreseeable future, what we are going to see is a mix of both. Part of the content would be online and uh, that would reduce the class load. Students will, have, will not have to leave, sit through boring lectures for one complete, for one hour. Uh, instead, they can learn things on their own, at their own pace. And we will have class interactions, physical interactions with the students. And, uh, and, and the world is moving in that direction. The pedagogy is going to be flipped learning, where part of the content is online, and part of it is, and there's nothing wrong in that, depending on, a, suppose if you want to learn differential equations. If you want to sit at home, I have seen, uh, I mean, many people who learn things on their own, they were self-taught. They just read books and listened to lectures, but that can happen for a theoretical search. But when it comes to experiments or application of a particular topic, then you have to have a session where you can interact with people, get together, form a team, and work with the machine. So in the, there's nothing to be afraid of. There's nothing to run away from it. Uh, we have to embrace the new reality. And it's going to be a mix and match of two kinds of pedagogy techniques so that the best comes out. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Dabhubrata. Very you, well sir. put across. And yes, it's a balance which has to be there. Now, coming to Gunjan sir, as we lovingly call him, Gunjan sir. <laughs> So, Professor Gunjan, uh, we come to the last question of our panel discussion today. As I had shared in the beginning, since it is Teacher's Day, we start with a teacher, we will end with a teacher. And the fact is, we will have two different teachers in the, both the questions. <laughs> so, we started with Avata sir, now we are going to end with Gunjan sir. So, now something which I am going to ask you, which is very close to your heart too. How have been these five months, or rather six months continuing right now? the lockdown days if i put it across how has been the experience of teaching or rather for teaching for all the teachers if i talk about how have been the teaching experience for you particular as well as for on your fraternity in your college could you sure. please share your thoughts and on this sure, sure. Uh, okay thank you sir uh, for your question uh, very first uh, let me say that when we have started the teaching learning process through the online mode, generally our mode is that when we are, our earlier phase was that we are entering in a class and we are saying, good morning, a student. <laughs> and we are getting a sound that as good morning, sir. Do you know what mentioned by our Pratik, sir? This word teacher will observe. And something is wrong in that section. This face-to-face -face interaction, that was our method. You know, teaching is a, uh, I can say always the start with the science and technology, but end with the art. And, and when it start, the two philosophies is very common. One is I can say love for subject that a teacher must possess. And second, love for a student. And this uh, good morning is has a love from both hands. And, and that is what we are missing very first, I can say, sir, during this last six months. So we have started with the tools. When we have start pick some tools, and we are searching for another to have a better service. Then we have come up with the problems that uh, initial phase, when we are asking a continuous uh, speak and all, two minute, we are asking, let a student respond. And a student also getting in the slip mode. So we both are in the slip mode and we both are finding nowhere uh, where we are. So, so <laughs> the, the phase of slip mode, uh, we have observed. So, but at the same time, let me say, again on 29th, uh, further, we have a meeting with our ISRE National Student Committee team. And, you know, I have seen as an opportunity. Now, let me connect, as it is the last question, to all the panelists what is spoken, like the personal care by Gautam sir, 
then Pratik Shar has given a very, very real life what ISRA is providing and what is the power of observation. I can say the teaching learning environment. And Sagarika Mem has mentioned that the, the practical connect with the life with the personality and character, that, that what mentioned. And our Tabrito Shar has mentioned about the hybrid uh, model that is the both mixed. Let me connect each and every wing here. Sir, when I have started my teaching online, you know, hybrid model sometimes is perceived like a offline and a, I say online. But what I see is, you know, today in all professional course, whether it's the medical, whether engineering or whatever it is, hybrid model is, as a teacher role is only 50%. After that, your hybrid model come, you complement your class with the industry talk, industry talk. And here, Israel, I feel an opportunity. And I have a discussion with my national uh, chair that, sir, why not? It is a good time to come up with a webinar, uh, a national webinar. And you know, today we have done successful 12 webinar. And I'm happy to inform you, the participant was from across the nation, houseful from the Nepal, from the everywhere. So what, where our Israel top authority even Pratik sir was one of the speakers that day, they are able to complement and educate the student. You know, so as a teacher, I'm able to connect, give my first love for subject, and then I'm able to connect the industry uh, for all. So this is the one I can say the for teaching. Now I'm coming to the second part, what mentioned about the lab and project. You know, when we are in the lab, we have faced a lot of challenges. We have a student from Tripura, we have a student from Bangladesh, we have a student from Nepal. You know, there is a lot of poor network, this connectivity, voice problem. Then as a teacher, we have to give a resources, you know, information, learning, everything. Teacher role is to give a roadmap. After that, learning happen automatic. So how to do that? It is not possible because everyone, even I have a kid, she is going through the classes. And, you know, there is some assisted learning. Everyone required a little bit of assistance when you are giving a first step, what you are doing, you are hand holding. Where, where this online platform not providing opportunity of hand holding, you know, then I have put in my lab, I'm giving you a solution here. I have put in, I've given you in the first online, I have complemented with the Israel talk. Then second, I have put in my lab one technical care and personal care. I put my lab assistant to call the student and get their constraint. Why they are not coming to the class? Is there the challenges? Do you know, I, I don't have a time to share you. But I have got number of cases. What are the real life challenge was there? In again, also I'm saying you, in during the afternoon time, we have learned a lot of things. When the high speed was going at seven or seven point fifteen, I was that time taking Viva on the, my mobile phone. You know, I was taking Viva on the mobile phone. That is, you know, as a teacher, and there is a commitment. But at the same time, number of student is facing a challenge. You have to put the resources in the place, you know, otherwise it is not possible to cater the heterogeneity, hand holding, and it is not possible to always give through the online. I'm giving you one example further here. In lab, in medical profession, there's just so many clinical aspects. You, you give theory, you know, a student refer just for a guideline, kitna karna hai. After that, they go read their own. This is the theory part, but practical part is not possible. Can you allow your uh, human body to have a clinical through the online platform? It's very definitely difficult. Definitely not. Definitely not. So, because the clinical eye is very, very important. You can get a feel of a patient. Like a teacher is like a feel of a patient. When we are coming in class, we are not giving one medicine. We are not giving one paracetamol or antibiotic. No, we are feeling the student. Wow, they are up in the down. So this is very, very important as a teacher. Now I'm going to the third segment, you know, a skill development and the connect with the industry is very important. After that, I move and discuss with my national committee. So now this knowledge lab, whatever we are doing, how we can connect with the real life uh, application because without application, you don't, this talk has meaningless, you know, you have to put the application. Definitely. Then announce the Israel student project plan where a student, I have mentioned you the capacity for research, capacity for creativity and innovation. This Israel student project grant offer that opportunity. And, and I, have, I have requested, sir, little bit announce early so that this lockdown period is utilized to create this innovation. 
everyone is looking for a food solution everyone is looking for a corona solution everyone is looking at a, a means all the culture that israel is proud and giving a focus on that so so we have announced and it has received a huge response and as a teacher i have seen number of student has really participated not only from my institute across the nation so this is what i can say then second is national student design challenge do you know again real life problem as pratik sir and swagatika ma'am has mentioned we have given one problem by that do you know lock time time was utilized by my student to having a solution of that so, so at least you know as everything cannot be offered but at the same time there is a opportunity to connect there is a opportunity to connect so this israel student project grant has given another opportunity then the solar decathlon was announced to for all the student it has offer another opportunity in fact you know first time in in what i am giving the good part right now what israel has offer is virtual faculty visit kolkata student haven't gone the hitachi factory visit uh, i can say in the history of lat whatever israel is existing but but israel has offer hitachi factory bring their room means factory coming their room so that is what israel has done during this process they have bring another company in the uh, online platform so so i think this is the way that connected but again when coming to the skill it is not possible because clinical i cannot be imparted with just with online you can give the up skilling you can give the knowledge providing but the team work but when the having a care of each other is not possible what i have learned as a teacher definitely and, definitely gunjan sir i got your point so okay, uh, sir, i am i am concluding here with this remark that of course again teaching start with the uh, science technology information what but teaching end with the art as a teacher we have to be constant innovator creator hand holder and i can say the facilitator and more than that be a good human for a student first then whatever it is what i can say thank you gunjan sir uh, your point is absolutely very pertinent and i believe all the panelists have said the same thing that we need that in a lona lighter note if i can share we need that organized chaos we need to have that face to face interactions because that is what makes us grow in life and that's what all our panelists agreed so with this i thank you all on and for the vote of thanks i would request uh, the host uh, shubham if you can take it forward from here thank you from my side shubham thank you i hope i hope hello uh, you have a challenge in connectivity it seems uh is there any questions uh, i think maybe one we can take we can just take one question maybe you can put it in the chat box so can i can i ask the question yeah please hello? uh my question is for uh, pratik uh, datta roy sir and uh, uh, sagorika ma'am like uh, like being the final year students we can we face that being a mechanical studying mechanical engineering we have issues like many of the students get placed in it companies rather than getting placed in a mechanical uh, engineering job because there are no uh, like i don't know what's the uh, opportunities available there but uh, being uh, studying 3 years of mechanical engineering what what we wish is working working in a mechanical uh, industry and uh, and utilizing whatever skills we learned in that particular industry so can you please explore on uh, yeah your question are you going to understand your question mr giraj right mr giraj kulkan right so uh, i think pratik da you, you already touched on this one but still i would request you to maybe yeah, put giraj it uh, it's it's a valid question because uh, Uh, you know at the end of the day uh, you know it's a demand and supply situation right so if you see that why many people from mechanical are going to it because there are jobs an opportunity in it it's 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 as simple as that and uh, what you mean by a pure mechanical job uh, the opportunities are less so if we have 1000 mechanical engineers are coming out maybe actually we have hardly uh 200 uh, you know logical jobs for a mechanical engineer available in the country now i will just take it a bit for, a bit further than only mechanical i think while usa produces 
maybe numbers i may be wrong if you usa produces maybe something around 7 or 8 lakhs of engineers i think india we produce close to 25 or 30 lakhs of engineers uh, and just we don't have so much of jobs so engineering in many cases turns out to be just another degree so it is not necessary that you are a mechanical engineer means you will be doing a mechanical engineering job although that is there is a bit of a bit of mismatch between demand supply and resource planning for the country because uh, you know tax payers money does goes uh, on uh, to make a mechanical or an electrical engineer so I, i keep stressing on those those things so there is nothing to be worried about it because uh, if you really love to be in mechanical engineering there is always a way to be in mechanical engineering okay there are plenty of companies uh, which uh, have a mechanical jobs in offer and uh, so you should not restrict yourself only to the companies which are possibly coming to your college for campus interview i think your whole question is based on campus recruitment right uh, this thing uh, of uh, you know people preferring to go to it was actually it started from about mid 90s and it reached a peak in about 2008 and 9 before the crisis and uh, if my understanding of the industry is correct i think this uh, uh, this uh, you know liking towards going to an it uh, job from a core sector the way as you call it has started coming down because uh, i think the top it companies today do not pay as much even as some of the, the better placed engineering you know core engineering companies Uh, earlier it used to be entirely different with your you know options to go abroad and uh, and uh, uh, and uh, earning dollars so if you really are interested in uh, uh, mechanical engineering job uh, are you a member of ishre giraj yes sir i am a member of ishre okay yes sir i am a member so of ishre generally yes, uh, you are in third year you said i mean uh, i don't know be in touch with gunjan uh, there is a job junction which is organized by ishre every year and quite a good number of people get uh, placed in core engineering field from the job junction so uh, i understand maybe you are not having a good pool of uh, you know core engineering companies coming and visiting your campus but as i said if you have a will there is always a way thank you pratik da i think uh, yeah sir yeah sir yeah, yeah. Uh, hi giriraj uh, i'll talk on a different note with you uh, answering to your question i understand many students uh, you know run with this confusion that i have studied this stream and how can i do justice with what i have studied and where i am going to be placed so uh, as an hr i'll suggest you please don't put yourself in such kind of confusions love what you have learned and try to implement it wherever you are placed just have that as i i'm from the very beginning i'm telling grow that passion as i said all crises every challenge every crisis brings you opportunity opportunity to evolve opportunity to progress so please uh, you know don't become judgmental with yourself because maybe that will bring up negativity in your mind and lots of things will come up and you will start thinking that i have 3 4 years i have given my time to all thick thick books and lectures of mechanical engineering and how can i go into it and work no you can do very well wherever you can go because take that challenge as an opportunity use your knowledge use your learnings to develop your own credibility you know so please don't you know keep those wariness and as uh, pratik san said because you are an hr uh, member and hr is doing so many things for their uh, students be in touch with kunjan san definitely you will you know get uh, job of your choice all the best thank you sagarika sir ma'am i just need to share as a thank you note because i think shubham has got some challenges on the connect uh, before uh, uh, if you I just can, allow me sir uh, yeah shubham is also there yeah i, I can hear i can uh, i i hope i am audible actually yeah you are audible my bandwidth is uh, very low okay so sir can you share the screen uh, yeah definitely to... shubham uh, that's what i'm doing just a second okay okay so hope my screen is visible Yes, yes. Please go to the slide, Shubham. 
a token of gratitude for all our panelists. Let's so just go to the slides too. I'll, I'll uh, from the first slide. Can you come? Yeah. So uh, I hope we all can agree after this panel discussion that the uh, that this quotation of this uh, great man, Abij Abdul Kalam, still stands prevalent. Teachers are the are the backbone of our country, the pillar upon which all aspirations are converted into realities. So I thank uh, all the panelists who have joined here. I thank uh, all the uh, participants. Who have joined uh, on this auspicious occasion with us? Uh, and can you, sir, move to the next slide? First of uh, first, uh, we have with us a person who, uh, whose words of wisdom has always inspired and guided us. He, uh, I mean, uh, we all know him as one of the uh, major impact uh, creator in our society. I would say. And thank you so much, sir. Uh, thank you for always guiding all of us. And we always look forward to hearing from you. Uh, happy Teachers Day, sir. Thank you for being with us. Next slide, we, uh, yes, sir. Next uh, is someone who loves to share his knowledge with uh, and we are really indebted to him. Uh, we thank you, Pratik Dr. Rai, sir, uh, for joining us as a panelist. Uh, we look forward to uh, more sessions. We, we love hearing you and uh, stay, uh, we'll look forward to you, sir. Thank you for joining us. Next, we have uh, uh, Professor Taub uh, Bhattacharya, who, uh, who's, uh, I mean, uh, we uh, words cannot explain him. He's one of the such great personality. The more you get to know him, the more astounded he will always be with his personality. The person, uh, I mean, he has so many accolades, uh, but he's so humble and friendly, and uh, I really love his sense of humor. Thank you, sir. Thank you for joining with us uh, this evening. Uh, next, we, ha we have uh, Professor Gunjan Kumar, uh, whom I cannot thank enough. He has uh, made a huge impact to my life personally, and uh, just like me, he has done, uh, he has shown uh, most of the students, most of his students, the pathway of life. Uh, thank you, sir. Please continue to do this great work that you do for all of us. Thank you, sir. Thank you for joining us. Happy Teacher's Day. I think next we have Mrs. Shagurika Mukherjee. Uh, she is one of the constant support our chapter in this uh, Corona times, this pandemic situation. She herself came up to us and she offered, I mean, she offered to give opportunities to the students of our chapter for virtual training at her uh, organization. We uh, really feel uh, grateful that, ma'am, you have joined us this evening. Uh, we look forward to uh, more such opportunities from you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you so much for joining. Happy Teachers Day to you too. And uh, last but not the least, our moderator for the, for the evening. Uh, I mean, uh, he is the powerhouse of our chapter. And he makes huge impact with his motivational speak, uh, speeches whenever he speaks. Uh, I really love the, uh, the I mean, your capability to think uh, innovatively. And I uh, really take, I envy that from, uh, from you. I, uh, I would like to learn more from you. How do you do that? <laughs> Always have an innovative, innovative solution to every uh, problem. Thank you so much, sir. You are one of the uh, teachers I came across very recently, but I really uh, adore you. Thank you so much. Thank you for uh, moderating this evening, sir. Next, we have a few announcements, very small announcements. But uh, the next slide, can you start? Cool. Yeah. yeah. So on Engineers Day, that is on 15th of September, we have uh, two very big events. We have with us the immediate past president of ISHRE, that is uh, Mr. Vikram Murthy. He will be speaking on the Indian uh, India Cooling Action Plan and what it means for the young Indians. This ICIP is a hot topic, I would say. So please join us for that evening. Uh, uh, and next slide, sir. And the same day in the evening from seven o'clock, we have with us, uh, sir, can you go to the next slide? Yeah, I've gone. <laughs> yeah, we have visible? with us Dr. Yeah, Dr. Minakshi Rathor. Yeah, nice no, visible. The same day, that is 15th of September, engineers will be uh, celebrating uh, with Dr. Minakshi Rathor at seven o'clock. So that, uh, that her topic of uh, discussion will be green buildings, concept, case study, and the rating system. 
please join us for these two uh, webinars on 15th of September. You will get all the uh, details uh, through our uh, mail and everything. Can you go to the next slide, sir? Next, we have a very important uh, announcement for the students. I would request the students here if you can take the next two slides. Yeah, uh, thank you, Shubham. First yeah. of all, before announcing this very important uh, announcement to our, each and every student, I would like, like to personally thank Shomudit sir, Shagarika ma'am, Gunjan sir, Topaprato sir, uh, Pratik sir, and uh, Gautam sir for this wonderful panel discussion today, which students have uh, understood and listened to. Uh, we have, you guys have touched very important points uh, about the student's career in the future days and what the students should focus in the days to come after passing out the engineering degree as rightly mentioned by you all. Engineering nowadays is, has become a degree only and we need to uh, build an overall background around us so that we can move into different kinds of fields, not only mechanical but also in other segments of industries as well. So to we, I, like, I would like to thank you personally from my end for this amazing and awesome uh, panel discussion. Uh, moving on with the slide which is being shown to all. Yes, we are back with the Asia Job Junction for the year 2020. It will be an online uh, platform by which we will be conducting the uh, whole process. Uh, in the next couple of weeks, on every week, we will be sharing you flyers uh, on how the process will go on. This is the first of the many flyers of the Asia Job Junction, which has been announced very recently from the HQ. So yeah, I would request all the final year members to complete their membership because it is open to all the students who have registered for the student memberships only. So those of the final year students, please pass, out, pass this information to those students who have not taken membership as of now. Complete their registration and membership by this month so that they can avail this huge, huge opportunity for the Isha Job Junction. We are back again. And please be in touch with your presidents for the days to come because we shall be sharing mails and various other information regarding these job sanctions in the upcoming days. So please be in touch with the team, with, please be in touch with Isha Calcutta. For any queries, we can directly contact us via mail, via text or anything. We will be there to guide you through all the processes and uh, be optimistic. We are back again with this thing in this code of pandemic times also. And uh, you guys don't need to worry about the job scenario in the days to come. So the first point in this part, particular part is complete your membership so that we can address all the students, members who have registered that, how to go on with this particular issue job function. Uh, in the next couple, as I said, in the next couple of days, we will be uh, discussing more on this particular topic. So if you just move on to the next slide. Uh, we have also launched our, uh, our uh, flyer for the global design competition uh, in RefCold. As you know, uh, in this uh, pandemic situation, uh, like all other events, we will be conduct conducting this event also in a virtual platform. The dates are already there in the poster. I have already shared this particular poster with all the presidents and also the faculty in charges. You can get these details uh, from them. And also we'll be sending a mass mail to each and every student members. And once again, this is open to the student members only. So whoever has not done their membership, kindly do it in a very fast pace because it is it, this event is in October itself. So we need to com complete your registration first to complete the, to be participate in this particular event. So with that, these are the two major uh, events we are planning in the days to come. Uh, no need to worry about all any jobs or what kind of events you are doing as on date. Uh, we will be in touch with you for these things. Be motivated. Complete your registration and uh, we look forward to your participation in all these events. And once again, thank you to all the panelists, the moderators for this awesome, uh, for this awesome discussion. Uh, it has truly been enriching and uh, it has already, all, it has touched all of our hearts and uh, answered all the many queries that the students had, have and had in, the, in their engineering lives in the four years. So thank you again, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. So... Thank you, really. I think it was a very good uh, panel discussion. Thank, thank you all. Thank you all. Thank, thank you, sir. It's wonderful. Thank you. Sir.